modular arithmetic in 100 seconds. Start with 5 o'clock times 2 is 10 o'clock times 3 is 15 o'clock, which is 3 o'clock times 4 is 20 o'clock, which is 8 o'clock and times 5 is 1 o'clock. So 5 squared is 1 o'clock and here are all the other squares. So for example, 4 squared is 16, which is 4 o'clock. If anybody wants to meet you at something squared o'clock, it's either going to be 1 o'clock, 4 o'clock, 9 o'clock, or 0 o'clock, which is what mathematicians call midnight. Now you can try this with other types of clocks with different numbers of hours. So for example, on a 5-hour clock, the, the squares are 1, 4, 4, 1, and on a 7-hour clock, it's 1, 4, 2, 2, 4, 1. And these subsequences are mirrors of each other, and that's no coincidence. Okay, so now let's look at one more thing, which is repeated doubling. So if you start with 2 and double it, you get 4 o'clock. You double it, you get 8 o'clock. You double that, you get 16 o'clock, which is back to 4 o'clock. And then you double that, it's 8 o'clock. So you'll always be either 4 o'clock or 8 o'clock. You'll never be at 1 o'clock. But if you have a clock with a prime number of uh, hours on it, you'll always get to 1 o'clock. So for example, here we get... 2 and then 4, 4 doubled is 8, which is 3, and 3 uh, doubled is 6, which is 1. And uh, this is Fermat's little theorem that you'll always hit 1, and Fermat can even tell you when you'll hit it, which is the number of hours minus 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 steps, and you're guaranteed to have 1. So for example, you can see on this 67 hour clock, after 66 doublings, we get to be a 1 here. Now, uh, these numbers in the middle, though, are really crazy. And uh, for example, if the number of clock is very huge, it's really hard to find something like 51 in there somewhere. Uh, and this is so difficult, it's called the discrete log problem. And solving it is kind of the basis of a lot of internet security.